When it's summer in Australia, everyone goes swimming, young and old alike, but especially the young. From these young swimmers will come the champions of the future. For them, there's hard work and study amongst the fun. They have to be trained. They have to work with coaches. Men who train champions, men like Harry Gallagher and Frank Guthrie, Men like Sam Herford and Forbes Carlyle. All winter they train indoors, working to strengthen their legs and develop every part of the body. All the swimmers, the famous and the unknown, exercise together. They work hard and rhythmically to make their bodies perfect. When the summer comes, many of them will swim more than 500 miles. All winter, they train to make that possible. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. They give their bodies proportion, strength, agility. They learn how to control their bodies with their minds. When spring comes, they're ready for the water. Most of the training is done in the early morning. The swimmers do two or three miles, then go off to work or to school. And usually, they train in groups that swim short distances at top speed, while the coach, in this case Frank Guthrie, keeps an eye on their progress. They listen to him, and they learn. Now, Sandra, look, you're still rolling. You're turning your head too soon. You're not seeing enough of that right hand go on the water. How is my kick? The kick's still too high, Brian, much too high. Now, what do you want? What do I have to do now, Mr. Guthrie? I want you to go and do another six laps for me across the pool. Right? Now, let's make this one a little bit harder. Right, take your marks. Go! It's important that swimmers should not overtax their strength. To prevent this, Coach Harry Gallagher checks blood pressure and heart rate after his swimmers have performed a set task. These careful scientific techniques were devised originally at the University of Sydney, but now they are a part of the coach's everyday method. They enable him to train his swimmers in the most healthy and effective way. But no matter how intelligent the planning or how scientific the method, the future champion has to practice. Two laps, Mr. Guthrie. Leg drive, the action and timing of kicking, can be mastered only after hours of practice on the kicking board. Now those legs are still too high. Keep them down in the water. Now, Margaret, there's one thing about your kicking that I've told you time and time again. You're still bending from the knees. It's merely a flex. And the rest of you, I want 16 uh, laps with your legs tied. You ready? Take your mark. Go. Coach Forbes Carlyle uses hypnotism. He considers that it helps his swimmers to relax. So you've done 310 miles so far this season. Well, that's not bad, Brian, but I'd like you to do five miles a day from now on. Oh, I'm a bit tired to be doing five miles a day. Yes, but you're on vacation and you should be able to sleep in the afternoons. The children keep me awake and I just can't sleep. We'll soon get over that now that you're a good hypnotic subject. Now, make yourself comfortable and relax from the tip of your toes. Feel yourself sinking comfortably into the chair. Then as you slip into a deeper and deeper sleep, your eyes will close. You'll be able to receive the helpful suggestions which I'm going to make to you. From now on, you'll be able to sleep at any time. Just relax and take five deep breaths and you'll sleep until you want to wake. Brian, you'll find your training becoming easier and easier to you. As usual, when you wake, you'll feel completely refreshed. Now, I'll count to three, and when I get to three, you'll be awake. One, two, three. Well, how do you feel? Very fine. Ah, oh, that's good. Relaxation is part of the style of every great swimmer. The great swimmer has no time to worry or be tense. Thank you.
Coach Guthrie and swimmer Lorraine Crap discuss a trial swim. What training do I have to do this morning, Mr. Guthrie? Well, on Saturday night, you'll be swimming in that 440 yards championship. And we want to see if you can break five minutes again. Well, what speed do I have to swim each lap? Then? Well, you'll have to swim about 37 seconds a lap. So let's get on with it. Take your mark. Go. Lorraine Crap's style is so relaxed and graceful that it almost hides the strength of movement that made her a world champion. Her leg action has tremendous power and drive, but her perfect style makes her swimming look effortless. Her somersault turn is so smooth and fast that it looks easy. It is this sort of timing and judgment that puts a swimmer into world class. Going. David Tyler, champion backstroke swimmer, practices his unusual somersault turn. How was that? Not bad, David, but you're still making your turn a little early. Now, make it a little later, try again. At the Melbourne Olympics, his method of turning was challenged by the officials. The rules say that the swimmer must remain on his back during the turn. Right. That was good. Now we'll try a few more and get it fixed. Off you go. Murray Rose is preparing for a trial swim. Well, Murray, you will uh nearing the end of your preparations, and uh, I want you to do a time trial for me. Uh -huh. What do you feel like doing? Well, how about a couple of 400 metre efforts? That'd be fine. Okay. Now on your way and make them hard. He is a vegetarian, and diet plays a large part in Thank his you, training. Mark. Go! Murray Rose is one of the great stylists. Sam Herford, his coach, has taught him never to sacrifice style and apparent ease in an effort to gain speed. Even in his toughest race, he always looks relaxed. After months of training, hours in the gymnasium, hundreds of miles of steady workout, the swimmer is ready. Thousands of people await the start of the international 400 metres freestyle event. The favourites are Rose of Australia in lane four, Yamanaka Japan in five, and Breen United States in six. It's a perfect start, all in the water together. A line of eight of the world's greatest freestyle swimmers come up and start forging down on the first lap. No one to single themselves out yet. It's still a line of eight, but now the three coming up to the first turn. It's Breen turning first, Yamanaka second, and Rose third. Down on the second lap, and those three have singled themselves out. It's going to be between the three of them, Rose, Yamanaka, and Breen. Rose goes to the front now. Yamanaka coming after him. He won't let him get away from him. Rose and Yamanaka, they'll turn together. They turn beautifully and push off dead together with a yard behind them, Breen of the United States. Now Murray Rose shows his superiority. He's forging away from the others. Rose with his glorious style. One lap to go. One lap to go now, and Rose turns first. Yamanaka in second place, and Breen wallowing in third place. Rose forging ahead now, but Yamanaka comes after him. Yamanaka trying to catch up the leeway, but Rose will win. He can't do it, the Japanese. Rose will win. Rose first. Yamanaka coming into second place. Yamanaka second, and Breen third. A wonderful win for Murray Rose of Australia. The big race is over. The shouting's done, the crowds have gone. But back at the pools, the coaches begin again. There are more records to break. Thousands of youngsters to teach to swim. Any one of these young Australians may be a champion of the future.